This episode is supported by Battlefilm.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at BeastsOfWar.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at BeastsOfWar.com. Christmas! Welcome to the Weekender. <laughs> you don't know how much organisation it took to do that, unless the editors left it in, in which case you know exactly how much organisation it took to do that. Look, we've discussed <laughs> last week what happens if you give the editors too much control, any control whatsoever. I'm no longer willing to speak on the show from now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to the Weekender. Uh, last Weekender of 2017. Mm, yes. And we'll be, uh, we're taking a break now for a couple of weeks over the Christmas festive season. Um, as has been uh, explaining to me all sorts of party games that I can play at home, uh, Blue Smurfs and, and uh, stuff like that there. More on that some other point. <laughs> um, <laughs> talking of festiveness, yeah. we have our annual Oriskany Christmas Carnage. So Christmas Carnage 4 I did five. <laughs> is, is taking place, um, or has took place over at beastofwar.com. It is, it, it is just I was rooting for the dinosaurs the whole time, man. I was uh, all behind the dinosaurs. You have to check this out. So uh, Christmas Carnage is an annual battle report um, where Santa's, uh, Santa's basically Santa Land. The North Pole is under the attack, and it's the North attack. Pole Defense Force yeah. that uh, we have to come together to defend it. Ben, who, who were our factions this year and what happened? Uh, I think there was quite a fascinating thing happening this year. We've had it in the past where it's been sci-fi themed and historical themed. This time it was a little bit crazier. Mama. Uh, so, we, so we had Santa and his uh, his buddies uh, hanging out at the North Pole, fighting off against all sorts of different things. So you had dinosaurs, you had dragons, you had all sorts of things th being thrown into the mix here, and it was just a little bit of a fun, little bit of fun, a little bit of chaos. Uh, possibly the best battle report of the whole year, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Mumra getting involved ups the stakes yes, like Mumra so well, much. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and we have to say. Because it is brought to you by our historical editor, it is absolutely factually correct and tactically f magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, I won't spoil the ending. It, it, go read definitely it, not like, spoil the ending. It's worth it, it's worth coming over. Um, we also um, uh, got a picture in yes. um, from the winner of the mystery box of the third annual awards. So it was Paul that won it, and we, I reached out to Paul and said, Paul, you got to send us a picture. Let us know what you're getting at. And he just he sent me a message going, like, this is completely honest with you. He got it on Friday evening, and he says, I'll have to do it over the weekend because there's too much here. I'm going to have to set up, <laughs> set up the house to try and get it in. So he sent us this picture. Well, hey! He, he, set, he set up his sofa with all the games. Now, there is actually one game missing because Paul has it all in front of him here. Yeah. But apparently, as soon as he had the box open, his wife laid, ah. <laughs> laid claim to Stewie's sexy party card game. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so fantastic. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing the pictures with us. It's I love to see stuff that we've sent out getting used, getting enjoyed. And if it doesn't start about half a dozen different hobbies for him, I'll be incredibly impressed. Well, yeah. this is the thing. His 2018 hobby is sorted. Yeah, actually, on uh, your 2018 hobby is sorted. Uh, Justin has now decided <laughs> that he is going to lead a new metropolitan fashion statement. This is this is hipster Justin. This look at this. <laughs> this is beardzilla man. This this is it. So I said to you, we're, I said you were going to do the Christmas episodes. Yeah, and you said to me, don't you worry about it, Warren. I, uh, I said, well, do we need to decorate because none of us have any time stuff? So he said, no, you don't need to worry about it. I, I have it right. all under control. Yeah. This is studio manager here. Yeah. So when studio manager says, I have it under control, yeah. I was expecting to walk in here and see tinsel and Christmas trees and everything. It wasn't in the budget. No, look at that. That is what we ended up. <laughs> that is Beasts of Wars King Christmas right there. I'm with I Justin on this. Down. I'm actually... I'm on board and I'm a little jealous. The I problem I have, nice the, the problem I have with it is if it falls into my dinner and spoils a Yorkshire pudding, I'm going to be mad. Mm. I need it to stick in. Your beard for you, can you make yeah. it stay? I want it to stay in so it never comes out. Oh, I, so I want a permanent. <laughs> I want a, you know, like you know those six month tattoos. I want a six month sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was tempted to get you the beard bobbles. 
Yeah. Oh, they're dying. So I just have well, balls exactly jangling off my yeah. face. Uh-huh. You'd hear me coming a mile off just clank, <laughs> clank. Yeah, so you, you see, you have to be careful because if, if you hang them too low, they might smack off your chin. Mm. Oh, no, we don't want that. No. We definitely don't want yeah. that. No. Um, I'm utterly lost on the running order now. <laughs> yes, okay, so congratulations to Paul and his wife. Merry Christmas to you both. We hope you have an absolute blast with that. And uh, next year we'll be giving away that twat and his sparkly beard. What? That's it, J- Justin. Do you what, know what? Are going to re gift me? I'm going to totally Game of Thrones this. I think slavery should be brought back in just for you. And we will package Sian, you up I, I, and send you off. Sian, I'm going to fall out the box and do a Tyrion Lannister and go, I am the gift. Yes, and he'll be wearing his best pair of assless chaps. Oh, <laughs> ancient joke, son. Ancient joke. Okay, right. <laughs> Before your what time. section are we in? <laughs> we have Before a, your time. We have a prize we're giving away in this, we are indeed. In this episode. What yeah. is it? Or do we, do we talk about it now? No, we, we do. Well, we're okay. going to tell you what the prize is now, mm. but yeah. we're going to tell you how to win it at the end of the show. Mm. Yes. So I have it here. Yeah. We're giving away a copy of Path to Glory, two-player starter set for Dark Age. Ooh. Shiny. Hold it up in front of the beard. Yep. There. They can, <laughs> they can see it. There it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, basically, this is it's a piece that I believe came out this year. It's a great way to get into the game. Mm-hmm. and. Honestly, I like it, so I want it to give it away this week. Okay, So this perfect. is my pick for a giveaway this week. Uh, stay tuned to the, the end of the show, where mm-hmm. we'll be uh, telling you how you it's can It's a doozy. It's yeah. a real... It's going to bring some imagination how you win this one. Right. We're going to get stuck into the news, see what's been going on this week. We'll be right back after we tell you about some hubs. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Take control of armies from the five kingdoms of Arcania and vie for the throne of the ancient king in Wrath of Kings. Master your skills on the battlefield over on BeastsOfWar.com. Hi guys and welcome back. Okay, Ben, tell me what's going on in the world, man. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, the first bit of news is actually coming out of Foreground. Uh, they shared a couple of new previews for what's happening with Fabled Realms going forward. Uh, as you'll know, their Kickstarter was very successful, and uh, they've been showing off a lot of the previews and renders that people have been working on. And here we see some of the renders for possibly one of the largest uh, creatures that they've got in the Kickstarter, which I thought was awesome. Mm. So we're actually seeing the terror here oh for God. the Strugoi, which I thought was wicked. Um, this wait, 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 wait. Is that a giant werewolf holding a dude? No. Flailing a dude? No. <laughs> no, it's a terror. So, in the Dragoi Coven, the curse can affect animals as well. So, I believe, if I remember the lore correctly, that this is an animal that has been cursed and has been taken over by the curse and then just grown in hunger. Bring it up. So, it's a werewolf that hungers for blood and probably no, it's isn't. Not a well, oh, well, it's like a werewolf that hungers for blood and is not weak to silver. This is totally a werewolf! <laughs> Look at those little dude! Look at those barriers. Look at the size of that thing! Yeah, is, it, is, that, is, that, is, that a, is that a child that he's swinging around there? No, or that's, a proper that's full a member grown of the dude? Military. That's a member of the military. This thing's gonna be massive! Yeah. Oh, wow! Oh, I this, love this, that! This is the thing that I really liked about this, because it's actually showing off a lot more scale when it comes to the game now for Fabled Realms. And it also opens the door and a lot of opportunities for other big creatures they could do later down the line as well. Obviously, the world of Fabled Realms is a little bit different from the kind of fantasy worlds we've seen before. So you don't very really get um, a lot of sort of typical uh, creatures in it. Mm-hmm. But it'd be very nice to see what they do and sort of uh, expanding their minds and looking at some more original ideas for larger creatures they could throw into the mix. And then you can add in a whole lot more of the sort of monster hunt scenarios that you see in a lot of these kind of skirmishy legacy games as well. I want to see so, how yeah, you win the legacy, amazing. yeah. That, yeah. You nail the, nail on the head for me there, Ben. I want to see, like, at some point, do you just break up your campaign by having a monster hunt? Or could you end up recruiting one of these? Because obviously you, it's you a Dragoi. Yeah. So the way this works is at the end of a battle, the, the Dragoi actually begin the recruitment phase. And Warren. What? Warren. Damn you want me, you want me to pull out? Damn it. Damn it. Yeah, okay, out, right, there we go. <laughs> but basically, you can recruit these through your campaigns uh, of Legends of Fabled Realms. Okay. He's yep. creasing. <laughs> it's, the, it's the end of the year, and I believe Warren is done for the year. Uh, I just love the sparkly bird stuff, man. It's just doing me in. <laughs> it's so festive. Totally uh, festive. I have an idea, right? Mm. What if they had. Some kind of a uh, uh, virus, right? They got a man and a wolf, right? Right. And kind of merged them together, right. okay, and made them really big and gave them the ability to pick up dudes. 
I think that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fantasy. Okay. <laughs> right, what's next, Ben? Uh, well, there's two uh, more to show. Oh, next. there's two more to show. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, as well as that, they showed off uh, some of the Patricians' guards as well. So, you've got a couple of different models there, which looks no, really nice. That that guy with the beard, mm-hmm. that has to be Big Ben. That no, looks, oh, no, 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 not, that's, no, that's not Big Ben. Well, it looks just like no, him. Big Ben is in there with a, a massive halberd. Oh, of course he is. You know, of course and, he is, you know, yes. Pot helmet, historically accurate gear. <laughs> okay, yep, uh-huh. And then we have the other image. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and the final one is for some of the sellsword crossbowmen. Uh, so there are four different poses there for you to choose from, which is always good to see with these kind of games. Nice to have lots of individual uh, organic poses for all the different characters so that you can actually tell them apart on the battlefield yeah. when you're playing through your games. So. These are beautiful. Yeah, uh, we've awesome. we've seen some of these in the flesh. I think we've put, have we put videos out for these yet? Uh, yeah, uh, some playthroughs, some yeah? Yeah, yeah. We've, done, we've done some playthroughs in the initial. We've got some more coming definitely yeah. in the future for foreground, though. Mm-hmm. Lovely, lovely looking miniatures. Right, we have samurai stuff on the way now. Yes. Tickles your boat. Oh, yeah. This has totally got me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, this is the new release from uh, Wall of Games that came out over last weekend, I think it was. And this is a new Pike and Shot style samurai army. Uh, so there's no excuse for Lloyd not to be start be playing with Far East and stuff at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and this is made up out of some of the old plastic kits as well as some new uh, metal stuff based around the War Games factory thing. So if you remember mm-hmm. those from a couple of years ago, yep. this is they they've all been sort of brought back to life here. Uh, the set contains 20 samurai, uh, 12 horsemen, 40 Ashigaru spearmen. Uh, 40 Ashigaru archers, and then there's also a samurai commander on the horse, and you get a whole bunch of uh, transfer sheets as well to get thrown into the mix. Um, so if you wanted to play some big mass battle stuff in Pike and Shop, here's an army for you to do that with. Or you could always take these down to the lower level, and you could start doing some skirmish games and play around in uh, Test of Honor as well yeah. at the same time. Yeah, beautiful so. stuff. Yeah, I've always loved the, the samurai stuff. Mm-hmm. So many opportunities. Uh, one of the one of my favorite moments was, I think it was in, um, if you go and have a look at the golden buttons mm-hmm. that we give out through the year, um, a few months back, somebody had done a Samurai Army and they had kind of like um, paper butterflies. Yeah, I and remember talking like that about and that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, mm-hmm. that's so cool. Mm-hmm. That is so cool. I actually found a cool thing for uh, doing that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. If you go into wedding craft oh, stores. Oh, that's mm-hmm. a smart idea. Right? Yeah. Um, it, you get these little stores and they're mm-hmm. completely dedicated to you doing crafty kind yeah. of stuff around weddings and yeah, stuff. Yeah, craft like world that. and stuff yeah. is amazing for it. They have little punches. Mm-hmm. That'll punch out little tiny paper dragonflies mm-hmm. and paper butterflies yeah. and stuff like that. So they're little die punches, and they have all sorts of um, cool and beautiful kind of things. And if you get that, yeah, and get kind of like a light enough semi opaque paper, mm-hmm. a pearl- pearlescent yeah. kind mm-hmm. of a finish, and you sit and punch them all out. You get these. You could stick them onto the banners of your mm-hmm. of your samurai, and you'll they'll, they'll have all that kind of. Whoa. Very cool. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it awesome? I, I just uh, I love it. One Absolutely of my favorite wedding it. things in those stores is the little diamantes you get. You know the little half diamantes you stick them on the cards and they just, just shine, just got to be sticky back on them. Yes. I wonder if they'd be any good for gems or anything on, on trips. Yeah. You put some Eldar with some little diamantes on them. Maybe even just um, some, some gemstone basings if you're doing dwarves. Oh, that's a nice idea. That's a nice yeah. idea. treasure chests that's and stuff. That's a really yeah. nice idea. We need to go wedding store right. shopping. I think <laughs> to stop the show. We're going to the local wedding shop. But they're but probably going to be closed. It's Christmas. It is totally worth a visit into those yeah. places, though, because it, uh, all of the uh, a little bit of lateral thinking. Because I'm fairly certain that they had uh, punches that did little leaves mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that as well. So. It, it is. It is really interesting. I, this, these little diamonds. It's the diamondy things I, yeah. is, a, is a weird story for me because I made one of my best best friends ever. She made her wedding gifts. What do you call them when you? Are you wed, oh, is it wedding gifts? No. Oh, the terms. When you sit down at the table and you give a little gift to everyone who comes, all the guests, they get a wedding favor. A that's favor. what it's called. Yes. She made them all, and they're all covered in these little diamonds. She handcrafted them all, mm-hmm. and I'd never met her before. And at this point, and I got my little favor, and I started going picking off the diamond. <gasps> oh, I, no. No, it wasn't mean to be mean. I just find it really relaxing. Uh, Have you ever just... Therapeutic. Like, they're really, really therapeutic. Just yeah. picking off. And she glared across the table at me and I all of a sudden realised what I was doing. Someone has spent hours making these beautiful things and I was sitting picking away. We're now firm friends, best friends. And now when I get cards from her, she makes me birthday and Christmas cards, she always puts diamantes on the inside for me to pick <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was at I was at my uh, our little primary school. Mm-hmm. They have a um, a Christmas extravaganza. Um, wow! <laughs> it used to be nativity when I was yeah. a boy, but now it's, <laughs> it's an extravaganza. Now. 
<laughs> and you go there and the kids get to meet Santa and mm -hmm. there's a little disco room and stuff. But they had a craft room, mm -hmm. okay? And they were able to make um, either like a Christmas tree mm -hmm. where they just basically stuck um, green crepe paper around it yeah. and PVA it all on. Um, or they were able to make a, like a little star, so which was two bits of silver card, one slides into the other. Mm -hmm. But they had all these little strips of diamonds and stuff like that there yep. that they could put on. <laughs> I'm mortified myself. So my my two little boys are making the stars, okay. and Savannah's making the tree, right? And they do all this, and they do all this. And I thought I'll have a little bit of fun with the with the school and stuff. So I take a strip of the diamonds and I <laughs> stick it on from the tip of from my nose to top of my nose up to here, <laughs> thinking it'll give me a kind of a Star Trek kind of a look, okay? So <laughs> all I, gonna, I stick it on to, from there to there, and, uh, uh, and I start going, you know, live long and prosper, ha, 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 ha. I then walk into the tea hall, still wearing it, thinking, oh, this is, this is fun or whatever, and Andrea's sitting uh, with one of, the, one of the other mummies. And uh, I walk up, and Andrea, Andrea says, what are you wearing? And her friend says, it looks like one of your bejazzles. <laughs> I was <laughs> utterly <laughs> mortified. <laughs> Oh, God. Whip it off. <laughs> so, yes, I will never be doing that again. That, that's what you get for trying to join in the fun right there. So be careful what you do with the Diamantes, guys, because it can get you into all sorts of trouble. Everybody looked, Justin. Everybody looked. I'm not surprised. Next year, I'm taking you and that beard so as I can get him <laughs> scot-free. <laughs> right, what's next, Ben? Uh, next up, we're actually looking at some releases that are coming out at uh, the sort of start of 2018, and this is for Flames of War and their fourth edition, which is all going to be set up in uh, the North Africa during the Desert Wars. Yep. And this is actually a new release for the Italians. Oh, uh, yes. So this is going to be a book called Avanti, which will have all the mm -hmm. rules and scenarios and all the things you need to know, all the history as well, yep. about the Italians fighting uh, in World War II between 1942 and 1943. Yes. Um, now, actually, the Italians... A lot of people would potentially put them down as sort of like a almost like a side play in World War Two, but they actually had quite an influence in uh, the North Africa campaigns. Oh, yes. uh, according to what uh, the guys at Battlefront were saying, um, they held the line at El Alamein, they opened the way at the Kasserine Pass, and uh, they also held the uh, American offensive at El Guttar as well. Apparently, mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, Ariskany will fill us in with the rest of the details when it comes to this. But um, they actually come with a starter set that you can go and pick up, which will give you some armor and some artillery. It's called Lorenzo's Rams. Yeah. Um, but as well as that, they're going to have uh, releases in box sets throughout February and March, and you can see some of the uh, different options there uh, presented in that news story as well. So if you're interested in playing as a little bit of a different side uh, in the Desert War conflicts of World War II, then you've got the Italians to look forward to in 2018. I love the little planes. Yeah. I think little planes are awesome, gorgeous. aren't they? You know what's missing? The one? planes are the best thing. Yeah. What's missing? <laughs> Your favourite Italian vehicle. The Auto Belinda. I go. was having a look there <laughs> for an Auto Belinda. An Auto Belinda is a very interesting vehicle. So it is. It's uh, according to Alessio Cavatori, it's like the best military vehicle ever made. <laughs> so it, has. it can go as fast in reverse as it can forward. <laughs> so it's um, a very typical <laughs> Italian vehicle, that apparently. Um, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly on. Um, <laughs> that vehicle's really fast in reverse and really <laughs> slow forwards. I'm like, <laughs> well, no, that's one of those branding terms that's so vague it annoys you. <laughs> well, you see, you had two drivers in some of them, so one guy was facing forward, one was facing backwards. No, it is. It's it's effectively the World War Two equivalent of the push me pull me. So it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's an amazing little vehicle. It, it really is an amazing. I, little I would vehicle. just hate it if I was in one of those vehicles where you have two drivers and you were arguing about where you were going for lunch. <laughs> 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 Next up, we have uh, Cool Money or Not. Now, this one's this one's an interesting. This is the coloured plastic terrain for a song of ice and fire. Now, I want yep. to try and dig deeper to try and under understand uh, what the what the plan is here. Ben. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh... Uh, on Kickstarter recently, they showed off an update uh, with this plastic terrain that they're going to be doing for a Song of Ice and Fire, uh, the miniatures game. This was uh, available as part of their Kickstarter project, and a lot of people were asking whether or not they could uh, look at pre-coloured stuff, and they've yeah. tried to do the same here, as you can mm -hmm. see. So they've worked on a whole bunch of different pieces here uh, in part of their previews. You've got the woods, uh, there's the god tree, there's a hill, and there's some also sort of like some accessories that you put down to the tabletop as well. So you've got walls and, and fences and all kinds of things like that. And then there's also the corpse piles as well. So, um, as you'll know, these were actually going to be sort of cardboard pieces when they get the game itself. Yeah. But then you can also upgrade into these plastic pieces as well, as you see here. Right. Mm. This is interesting. 
you, it, and it's the it's the game mechanics are it's very utility m- versus aesthetics. It is, me. yeah, it's. it is. Um, the, uh, clearly, they're designed that the trees and stuff pop out because uh, mm. the, the game mechanics in the Game of Thrones is mm. once you touch a piece of terrain, Justin, you kind of snap into it. Is yeah, that you, it? you kind of pop on into it, definitely. And then some of the ones, if I if I scroll down here, there's the oh, where are they? These pieces. So basically, these. If you hit these, some of this will actually disappear. So see the spiked fences here? Yes. If you hit that, you'll take damage going over it, but then it goes away. Okay. So, so. for it being on one centre piece like that, where you can very easily lift it or add it mm-hmm. or remove it from the drain. So it's very versatile versatile in terms of the gameplay, it makes perfect sense. The yeah. way they've designed the design perspective for the rules, to me, makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now, you see, the thing I really like about this terrain is that if you're coming to a miniatures game for the first time because you've heard that it's a Song of Ice and Fire, you've immediately got coloured terrain that you can just sit down on the table and play with. That's true, yeah. Mm. If you're a hobbyist, it doesn't take too much to suddenly make this pop a little bit more. Like, the colour is already down on these these models as it stands, and yes, it's very bright, but with a quick wash over the top of these and then maybe a little bit of dry brushing after the, after the fact, you know, add in a little bit of flock as well, do a little bit of hobbying on the side, this could actually turn into some really nice terrain that is kind of taking a step out of the process for you so you don't have to worry too much about undercoating and all these kind of things like that you can just go straight into the weathering stages for this like, i generally think this is going to be quite a nice thing to see on the tabletop and it'd be good for getting people straight down into the gaming of a song of ice and fire very very quickly would uh, you not want to prime so. it straight away would, 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 would washing straight onto plastic I'm, really i'm with i would you. i was thinking this as yeah. well it, uh, i agree with ben that Potentially um, washing it, or do you know what? Dipping it, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, putting dip on it might give it a, a load of extra shading. Mm-hmm. But I am, I'm curious as to just just properly yeah. prime the thing mm-hmm. and then airbrush it up. But and, as if we look at what the base core game came with on the Kickstarter, it was a cardboard. And if you just imagine yeah, yeah. the base with nothing mm-hmm. on it, so if yep. you paid a little bit extra, or you or you got the stretch goal for this, then fantastic. It's just the the interesting thing about this terrain is, um, um, it'll be interesting to see what the costs of it are. Mm-hmm. Because for well, tournament organizers, yeah. this could be this could be amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's an interesting thing because uh, this was available through the Kickstarter, and you can still get it through sort of late backing of it. I'm not entirely sure whether or not this is stuff is actually going to go through fully to retail. All right. I would like that to be the case, uh, and I'm sure yeah. that Simon will clarify in the near future about that. But I, I, as I say, I generally quite like this. I think it's a nice way to take a step out of the process uh, when it comes to getting down onto the tabletop and gaming and stuff. So yeah, I'm curious to see what FFG will do to react to this because Rune Wars, being a, a rank and file system, where yep. a tray a tray mm-hmm. based system mm-hmm. similar to Song of Ice and Fire, also has terrain, which mm-hmm. is also cardboard, which you also snap into whenever mm-hmm. you engage into it. That fits the trays perfectly, and each piece of terrain has a set size depending on the tray size. Yeah. Um, so very similar. I wonder if this will give them a prod to say, actually, hold on, maybe we need to think about doing something that lifts the table so yeah. you're not just playing with 3D miniatures and 2D terrain. Mm-hmm. I, I, this is, I think it's really important because I'm not, I understand that board gaming and stuff is... is they're overlapping nice. more and they're yeah. kind of coming closer. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure that, that these games suit mm-hmm. yeah. 2D playing surfaces. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I think that the whole purpose of um, miniature games is that you, you start to break out of that two-dimensional mm-hmm. surface, you know, and you, you really start to, to get down and to, to look at the, the tabletop yeah. and to, to, to see everything all starting to grow. And, you know, and the idea is that you, know, you, you buy over time mm-hmm. more and more terrain, and you add more terrain and stuff to your to your table and your yeah, your it's, collection. You know, it's um, uh, <coughs> I'm I'm not a huge fan of this you see, flattening the, potential. The, the, this this is where I, this is where I think terrain pieces like this are going to be a good idea then, because it means that people who are potentially looking at the game like a Song of Ice and Fire, they they look at this game and they see that oh wow, you can get 3D terrain for this, yeah, yeah. and that yeah. will spur them on to take that next step towards actually doing the hobby aspect and building terrain terrain of their own potentially as well. Yeah. Or buying from, you know, the plethora of different companies out there that make terrain for fantasy gaming and stuff. So yeah. yeah. The argument against the 3D terrain though for these games is a tactical clarity that you get with a 2D table. You can see exactly where everything is. Nothing's really hidden behind terrain and stuff. Now I know that maybe takes away from the cinematic side of things. But it really means that you can see what you're up to, what you're trying to do, and really plan out your stuff. And the gameplay for A Song of Ice and Fire works so well with the 2D terrain. 
Yeah. It stops that true line of sight issue. I can see it. Oh, I can't. I can't quite. Oh, yeah. well, you need see, see <laughs> I, I think that's. I think that that works quite nicely when you're looking at a game uh, like obviously Mercs. Uh, when, from Megacon, mm-hmm. that was great because I can imagine that 2D down thing because I could feel like the tactical level of decision making in a sci-fi game. Mm-hmm. But I think when it comes to fantasy, I think people expect more a little bit, a little bit more of a, a spectacle on the tabletop, yeah, a little bit more of that pageantry. And I think terrain like this clearly adds to that. Yes, it's it's a decision between tactical and aesthetics mm-hmm. and stuff. But I think with fantasy gaming, there's a lot more focus towards that side of things. I think, but mm-hmm. that's just my opinion. On that. I, I'm tempted to go a step further than that as yeah. well. You know, I, I think once you actually start to come into miniatures mm-hmm. gaming full stop, mm-hmm. um, you, 2.5D at a minimum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I, is I, kind of where I'm at. You know, yeah. Space Hulk. Is an example mm. though. But, you know, let, 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 no, well, no, it's not actually. It's really. a board game. But uh, yeah, Space Hulk is a board game, but it's a miniatures board game. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But even Space Hulk <laughs> had uh, 3D doors. Mm. Mm, yeah. You know? Do you know what I mean? It's like I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of uh, of Necromunda, but Necromunda had uh, has the, the the 3D three dimensional pieces <laughs> to make it 2.5D, and and then when you do start to break out into the war games. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's, um, I don't know, I'm really, I have a real sense of ambivalence on this. I don't know what I think about this. One thing to be very <sighs> careful of, though, for this game in particular, is each of those terrain types that we have seen has a very suspe- uh, specific rules mechanic within the game. Yes, yes. You know, so you have to be aware that if you start building, like, custom tables and stuff for this, you're going to have to really be clear with your opponent what is and what is not that terrain, what is dressing, what is blocking, what is having an effect on your game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to get a game of it's, this. Here's it, the it thing. Really good. I, I, I don't know with the Song of Ice and Fire, but I think it's the same, but with Rune Wars as well, because I think they're, they're similar in, in premise and how the rules work. Um, any terrain you put on the table is game is impactful, not in just a visual way. You don't really add anything to the table for visual. It's only for, does that give me cover? Does that block a charge? So it's, and they all have rules, for, as Justin said, for each bit of terrain. There's, and that's the separation to me, yeah. because you're, you're putting nothing on for decoration, nothing on for style. It's just for utility, yeah. um, well, that, which makes it more tournament appropriate, almost, but far less imagination provoking. Mm. Um, maybe, maybe I struggle with middle, this as well. Maybe um, there's a middle ground in there yeah. somewhere on this, you know? Maybe, maybe. <coughs> this, this is what I would say is, if you built a custom table and then actually use these as the terrain pieces which have the game effect, yes. and then anything that's not that is very clear mm-hmm. what does not have a game effect, Yeah. and that'll let you build something a bit more grandiose and cinematic if yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Would that work for you? I don't know. If don't anything, know. this brings hopefully more board gamers, more CMON board gamers into miniature gaming. Yes. And hopefully more 2D cardboard people will get the 3D and then they'll start looking, what, what can I do to make this 3D mm-hmm. stuff better? Oh, this company does trees. This company yeah. does walls. And, and mm-hmm. we might see that push just yeah. as we're seeing it come the other it's way. It's interesting. I suppose when, when there's crossover, mm-hmm. there's it, give and take. Yeah, Something absolutely. has to give yeah. somewhere, doesn't it? And mm-hmm. it's, um, it'll be really interesting to see you know, because we, we, we've, as miniatures, war gamers. You know, we've been, we've <laughs> Speak been, for yourselves. Yes, but, it, <laughs> but in, you know, as a, as a community which has had a lot of war gamers in it, you know, we have been embracing board games and Absolutely. things like that. It will be interesting to see if it, uh, if uh, what mm-hmm. uh, facilitates the, the yep. reflection backwards, mm-hmm. you know, that people that have maybe never done, mm-hmm. uh, been into the hobby that we've, yep. the aspect of the hobby we've been into, mm-hmm are totally into their mm-hmm. buying board games. Yep. They pick this up, they pick up the, mm-hmm. the terrain just to see what it's like, and then suddenly then yep. they start to go, they start to gravitate uh, more um, into the <clears throat> this end of the uh, of the spectrum. If it yeah, brings more board gamers into miniature games, I'd love it. Like, There's a lot yeah. crossover. I'm, I'm all up for sort of cross-fertilization mm. of the entire community. Tabletop, yeah, absolutely. Really. Um, <clears throat> big one. Big announcement. This next. lot excited me mm-hmm. something shocking. Legion Snow Troopers. Yeah. Um, uh, we love some Hoth. Uh, well, absolutely. Check these bad boys out. Oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, Fantasy Flight Games announced uh, this week that there are going to be a whole bunch of new expansions uh, coming to Star Wars Legion next year. And this is actually focused around um, Hoth which is pretty cool. Maybe we're going to see some more expansion stuff coming in in terms of the environmentals. That could be kind of awesome. But Can yes. I pause you for a quick uh, second, bit, just where you got this picture up. Sorry to interrupt you, but look sorry. at the painting, look at the basing, and look at the terrain mm-hmm. that FFG are doing with Legion. 
yeah. after they did the Rune Wars thing with the 2D terrain, the Trebius mm -hmm. thing, now they're going into full miniatures. They're definitely embracing it 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything we've seen at Gen Con, everything we've seen at Essen, they've learnt from, I wouldn't say their mistakes, but they've learnt from their previous miniatures and now they're going full on yes. into the miniatures. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it comes through in everything they've been showing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, this uh, is a set of seven stormtroopers. Well, sorry, not stormtroopers, snow troopers that you get uh, coming with all the upgrade cards and the tokens, all the bits and pieces you need to play with them on the table. Um, they're a little bit uh, different from normal stormtroopers. Uh, they don't have as much movement capabilities because they're sort of weighed down with their environmental gear. But they do have a couple of new options, including one of them, which is their uh, sort of ion disruptor rifle they have, and this can be used uh, almost against infantry, which is quite a, a sort of um, all your eggs in one basket kind of thing against inventory or you could use it against uh, vehicles so it's very good at taking down the light stuff like snow speeders and the, and the like from the, the rebel side um, so if you're interested in playing around with a little bit more of the heavy gear that the snow troopers bring to the tabletop you've got that aspect of things going on um, also there's going to be a new commander figure that's going to be added to the Imperials and that is uh, General Veers yeah. who a lot of people on, will on know on foot like not yep. in the yeah. top of an ATST. on mm -hmm. foot what AT-80 yeah. AT-80 AT, AT. 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 Adat. Adat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's uh, General Veers comes with a whole bunch of cards, as you might imagine. Uh, one of his big focuses is that they wanted to take things away from the more frontline uh, commander role that Darth Vader had, who will come in the starter set, mm -hmm. and instead focus on a little bit more of a tactical commander role on the tabletop. So mm -hmm. General Veers had a lot of abilities and upgrades that will allow him to make other troops move and get into cover and increase their fire rates and things like that. And as you might imagine, he also has a commanding presence when it comes to using the uh, the vehicles in the game as well, so the ATSTs and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so he's going to be very interesting to see on the tabletop. They also um, threw a couple of ideas in there for maybe if you wanted to use both Darth Vader and Veers because he's quite a low-cost uh, command figure in the game. So you could almost have a little bit of a, a tactical to and fro between the two of them. You've got Darth Vader leading from the front, where you've got Veers at the back looking after the vehicles and some of the longer-range troops in your force at the same time. So it's good to see them looking at a lot more options when it comes to Star Wars Legion, which is very, very good to see because a lot of people wondering what they were going to be doing once the first set came out in, uh, in 2018. This, you know, obviously shows a big uh, sort of um, path ahead of them for Star Wars Legion and uh, into the future and the, and the years after this as well. So. Yeah, I have a feeling when I read this earlier, Ben, am I right? Is, is it available for pre-order now? Am I... Uh, I, as, far as I? As far as I know, most of the stuff that they do preview like this, yeah. it does become immediately um, available to pre-order. So um, it may still be quite a long way off. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it's not just a core still... set, that you're going to have expansions for pre-order right now, yes. yeah. in a hope that if it's not immediately out with the core set, it's out very soon afterwards. Yeah. I'm thinking... Adepticon. I'm thinking March time. I mm -hmm. think we're going to see it. That's when Rune Wars came out. Mm -hmm. I think. I think if they're going to really pitch this to the miniatures guys, and it is going to be Q1 next year, all being well with boats and such, and, mm -hmm. and Disney and such, uh, touch wood. Uh, I think Adepticon's when we're going to really see this. Yeah. The it, question is, would they maybe want to have it released before Adepticon, and then people can come and maybe do a tournament at Adepticon? Well, very that's quick, what I would look at. Very quick turnaround for. A I'm hoping that we're going to get Don and Gianna actually yeah. to pick up. Um, with FFG in mm -hmm. America and early next year we're going to see if we can find out get our hooks into FFG a little bit and find out what they've planned for Adepticon because yeah. I think I think that's going to be a key for if them. I could if I could if I could <clears throat> force send you a message it would be go big on this FFG mm. um, oh you're my only hope <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was watching a documentary um, about the Star Wars merchandise mm -hmm. um, because I have never um, experienced a, a a toy line like what I experienced as a kid mm -hmm. with, with Star Wars, and it was very interesting that whenever um, Lucas went out with the merchandising agreements, um, uh, Mattel and Hasbro and these guys uh, weren't that interested. Yep. Um, so it was Kenner that picked it up. Mm -hmm. Now Kenner at that point had had a bit of success with. Um, I think six million dollar man, mm -hmm. um, action man, looking through stuff. the back of the head, <laughs> <laughs> and um, they they uh, Kenner were were known for kind of creating activity toys. Mm -hmm. So Kenner signed the deal, and uh, their initial plan was to create a couple of board games and a couple of lunch boxes. Mm -hmm. um, wow. uh, so, but very quickly, um, uh, Kenner started to to create the the little three inch, four inch mm -hmm. figures. Mm -hmm. And then they, they realized uh, the, the secret to this, and this is the point that I want to get across, is 
uh, people kids wanted the ability to play it all out yeah. mm -hmm. they wanted the ability to recreate it all mm -hmm. so that's why we saw Atats, Millennium Falcons there was uh, there was uh, something like a hundred different figures uh, the individual awesome. sculpts in the range not including the vehicles mm -hmm. you know so it, it was there was um, quadrants of the Death Star there was all sorts of things so if if I could get one message into Fancy Flight <laughs> is have courage on this one, mm. go with it all and give us the capacity to do it all. We want to do it all because if we, if we can do it all, we will do it all. <laughs> if, it, if, it's just, if it's just snippets of it, we won't feel the big picture. Mm. Do you know where you won't feel like this is something I can utterly throw myself yeah. into? And that, that is where the most successful miniature war games are. They are in a spot where you feel you can utterly throw yourself at it, mm -hmm. and it it, it 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 will always satisfy your needs. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, and I really genuinely want to see Fancy Flight um, bet the farm on this and throw it all because it. it I believe if we can do it all. Um, you believe in Star Wars? We will, we'll, we will jump in. We've talked about longevity of games <coughs> stuff before, and I think you're hitting the nail on the head with that. You need the depth with yeah. the miniatures game to really pull people and say, this is my number one hobby. This is the thing I dedicate all my time and, to. And it's, it's for the collectability yeah. as well. Because the more there is to collect, the more you want to collect. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to see Atats. I want to see the Millennium Falcon. Mm. You know, it's... Um, you know, you want X-Wings, TIE Fighters, you want all of it mm -hmm. so that you can recreate the most wonderful stories that, 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 that crop up in your mind. Well, how many well, times have you been to it, where you've seen people homebrew Star Wars games and stuff like that? Not only have I seen it, we've done it. <laughs> so, go ahead, Ben. Uh, I mean, to, to go back to what some of the things that um, FFG said at Gen Con this year, like, they have access to everything Star Wars... So, in, in, in many regards, nothing is technically off the table. So, they can do whatever the hell they want, really. Yeah. And, I mean, they've been going full hog into, um, into Star Wars Destiny, and they've delved into all sorts of different nooks and crannies with that game and, and all the different lore and stuff. So, you know, if, if, if they really want to go for it, they definitely can, and they've got the scope to do it. Uh, and from what we're looking at, they're doing a really nice job at covering these the original trilogy, and then of course you've got the, the you know the prequels as well that they can go and look at, and you know everything that's happening with the new films as well. But long till Jar Jar on the tabletop. Yeah, but this is but this is this is not a test of their license agreement. Yeah. This is not a test of their skill. This is not a test of their marketing prowess. This is one test. This is a test of their courage. Mm. Do they have the courage to throw <laughs> to throw everything at it? To throw to bring the company whole, on the line, <laughs> the whole flipping thing to life. In they other words, do not, do no not hold back. <laughs> yeah. You know, you bring out atats. We will be buying multiples of atats. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, it, you know, this is this is this is a singular test of the courage of the company. Mm. How? courageous can they be yeah. in allowing us to truly collect mm -hmm. um in the universe of star wars um that will be the that will be the the test mm. young padawan <laughs> 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 right justin you have an exclusive for us i do justin is about to exclusively reveal he told me not to say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can we say who you're sitting down with? Yes, you can say who I'm sitting down with. Yes, he's sitting down with the mighty Alessio Cavatori. Fame and fortune awaits in Blood and Plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at beastsofwar.com. The new Flames of War 4th edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. Hi everybody, we have Alessio in the studio with myself and John and we are sat down for a bit of an end of year chat with Alessio. You know, kind of a state of, a, of the union chat with Alessio to see just how River Horse is going because you guys have now been running since 2010, isn't it? That's right, yeah, 2010. I remember it was a... Uh... A long time. Sure. A, sure. Are you sure? I'm sure. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm I'm sure. That, that history is oh, all around us. It's all around us. Ooh, and look it's at the same copy. <laughs> is that? It is, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. And I've seen, I mean, I've seen around me all sorts of other things. I mean, there's the Tower of Loca there. Uh, there's 
Terminator over there. Uh, yep, you have Terminator. Waterloo. Over there. <laughs> Waterloo. Oh, uh, we even have some impressive, uh, yeah, the impressive artillery shots. Yeah. <laughs> so we're literally surrounded by bits. I mean, it's really coming here with you guys is a, is a strip down nostalgia yeah, yeah. memory lane. It's just you just go, wow, yes, I remember. Well, so, because you started not. Not much it before. was 2010 was whenever I started with Beast. Okay. Uh, Games Day 2010 was the, the first trip away I took with them and came back to... Uh, okay, I'll tell this story. Uh, so I went to Games Day 2010 with the lads. I came back. My boss at the time I was working on site made me redundant whenever I returned. Right. So from there I just went, well, Beast of War all the way. <laughs> and he has never looked back since. I have not, and I am quite content with that. But we are not here to talk about the past of Beasts of War. We are here to talk about the past and future of River Horse. So, Alessio, this year's been big for you. Yes, it's been big. It's been really, really huge. I mean, the last couple of years have been you know, the game changers, really. Mm. Uh, the company has grown exponentially, I would say. Uh, much bigger, much more uh, high-level high kind of licenses and stuff. So we, we've, um, we've certainly... Experiencing rapid growth, which with yeah. all its troubles, of course. And, uh, they <laughs> really will say, good. "Oh, you're doing well. You must be happy." I go, "I'm happy. Also, I'm going insane because of all the <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff that is going on." It's like, "Ah, oh my god!" I mean, like uh, one of the biggest things that has has happened for you guys is you've picked up the the My Little Pony license. <laughs> now, this to me to actually work with Hasbro is yeah. huge. Is it, they're, they're a giant. It was the, the moment you told us that you'd you'd picked up the license from Hasbro, I I sat back and went, that's actually that's a really big step on on Hasbro's part as well as being able to actually get the license mm -hmm. and do something with it. And yes, you have been supporting it through the year, so mm. uh, let's actually start. So let's go through a little timeline of what happened with the My Little Pony IP because I'm, sure. I'm quite curious to see just what you were thinking as you went through each bit. So I've got some images here. So the first thing you came out with was a core rollback. Certainly. So it's a, it's a traditional uh, role-play game, RPG, and all this, you know, as we know them. Mm -hmm. uh, Tales of Equestria, basically, it's a fantasy adventure. I fantasy because, I mean, My Little yep. Pony is perfect for that setting. We already yep. discussed mm -hmm. this. So we went, okay, core rulebook has got an adventure, has got races, has got rules, and it's all there. So mm -hmm. that, that's a self-contained... Often we get, we, we get asked, so where, is, where do you start with this? It's like, that book. What, number one? <laughs> that book. So just put a big one in the corner. Yes, it's got everything. <laughs> you know, you got to start again. Okay, you then started expanding into like the ancillary bits that role players need, but you tried to keep it very, very themed. Oh yeah. To the world now, as I see on this, even the way you spelt teals, it's <laughs> teals, not teals. Yes, so, yes, because it's a, it's all about well, horse puns, of yeah. course. <laughs> Clever play on words. But the next thing you made was some friendship tokens for people to give through. That's to right. Games. This is uh, crystals of friendship, mm -hmm. guaranteed original crystals of friendship. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> those are for you know, if you're familiar with the plot points, mechanics in RPGs, mm -hmm. those are rewards of the. The GM awards the players if they behave in a very friendly way in, mm -hmm. in, in character, and then the players can actually spend to reroll dice or combine them with their friends to achieve even more amazing feats of mm. friendship powers. Yeah, but it, it's a lovely thematic little extra that people can add to it whenever they're sitting down to play. You know, they they pull out the bag with Twilight Sparkle on the front and just yeah. go, "Okay, I have my tokens of friendship. It feels right for the world." Yep. So that that's something that I'm I'm very impressed with is that you stayed very true to the narrative of the world and the style and feel of it. Mm -hmm. Well, friendship is magic, and it is magic to see kids, you know, mm. trying to be as amazingly helpful and nice and friendly <laughs> to each other, and we play, you know, because uh, mm. they want this 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 power of friendship with mm. them. Nice, very cool. All right, you then went on to creating some custom dice. Yes, these are lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, John, I think these are class. <laughs> <laughs> <Every> well, <laughs> obviously, RPG is polyhedral dice. I mean, a river horse has the classic. I mean, the colors are the ones we use in all our, our products. So you can see the red D4. They're all elemental colors, I should add. So fire, mm -hmm. the D4, earth, the, the D6, and so on and so forth. <laughs> uh, but the yeah, these ones are the Pegasus set. Mm -hmm. So they are transparent, like yeah. the sky. Yeah, and then you've done ones for the, the unicorns, I believe, as well? That's correct. That's a unicorn set, which is actually glittery, all about sparkly magic. <laughs> and I'm sure, as an expert, you realize that we haven't put Twilight there. We put Starlight oh. Glimmer, because yep. she's kind of the, the, the six and a half of the main six. Mm. <laughs> she, she's, the, she's the new student. Indeed. 
a Twilight protege, and she's there to, you know, to, to represent unicorns because mm. Twilight has moved on to be the Princess of Friendship, so she was in the other yeah. box. <laughs> okay. Uh, we then obviously have the Earth Police, and you couldn't have that without Pinkie Pie and Applejack on the cover. <gasps> he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> I know, I know, He's I know. one of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, John only, has. <laughs> only because I made him watch the first two seasons. No, no, not quite. Not quite. I had actually watched Elf and Lead beforehand. Anyone who's an anime watched, fan out there will know that you need a straight injection of happiness and joy after that show. Yeah, he, he watched an incredibly dark, it was very dark. A very dark show to yeah. then be in the mood for me to come in and go, hey, do you want to watch this? It'll cheer you up. So <laughs> if you've been trying to convince your friends to watch My Little Pony, make them watch Elf and Lead first. Or indeed, uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, Great for Fireflies. Which I would recommend you to watch if you want to get really sad. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, I think I'll pass. I think I will pass. Okay, so we then had the the next one. So this was an expansion box. Yes, that was the the one where con the con follows the rulebook really as the mm. next step, or next buy if you want, mm. which includes the the gem screen, which mm -hmm. is pretty on the outside and full of interesting information on the inside. Mm -hmm. The basic set of dice, so those are just plain pastel dice. There are no special effects or anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, then the uh, the Curse of the Statuette, which is the first adventure. It mm -hmm. follows on from the little adventure that is in the in the rulebook, mm -hmm. and is the first full module effectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the character pads, the character sheet pads, mm -hmm. which uh, basically have all the, you know, the, the the different flavors. There's unicorn, earth mm -hmm. pony, Pegasus, or mm -hmm. a blank one where you can actually do. And there's a copy of all of them into male versions. So you have male and female versions of the ponies. That's nice. And they come with silhouettes. So actually, we found it's great fun to have these, for example, at events because mm -hmm. you know you put them on the table there, and, and kids and their families say, "Man, grown-ups, quite all grown-ups, just start, just sit down and start coloring their ponies <laughs> and, and name them." It's great fun. Yeah. I mean, like the the design is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. so. Very very nice little character sheet, very straightforward and easy to to figure out, which yeah. is exactly what you're looking for in a game like this. Exactly, yes, yeah. absolutely. We wanted a kid to be able to, to, to enjoy it and play yep. and understand. Yep. So it's, really, the rules are. Very minimal, mm -hmm. but you know enough to to interest. I mean, there's some great reviews out there, and people seem to like the system. So I'm very pleased with that. Yeah. Okay. Now the next thing you added, I think, is the genius addition to the actual the system, and it's what every single role playing game needs. It is, of course, the beastie area. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yes, the bestiary of Equestria. Yes, we have in there a lot of creatures, characters, and new playing races. Ooh. You know, in there you can play, you can change as, as well as a pony, you can actually also play as, let's see if I remember them all, Dragon, mm -hmm. Griffin, mm -hmm. Buffalo, Diamond Dog, Changeling, and Crystal Pony. So these are the new races that are introduced there as player races. John, what do you think? I want to play as a Changeling. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I don't want to see you play a role-playing game as a shapeshifter. I'd like to play as a changeling. It'd be, it'd be funny. I, I think horrible things could happen. I think it could go so badly wrong. It'd be funny. Where's John gone? Well, where he was stood, there's now a rock. <laughs> is it a rock or is it actually him? Go poke it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Changelings are very powerful indeed. Yeah. They're very yeah. flexible. And of course, they are offset by it. Uh, we have to give them a big, a big drawback in, in to, to try to balance them out. And they have this greed for, for love that makes them kind of a bit, uh, you know, like uh, dependent. Always wanting to be loved, etc. Always wanting to to get it. So yeah, so they're the character limitation in a way, but uh, very good powers. Yeah, but if them. if you're a parent running through it, you can have some fun with that with your kids. You know, to actually sit down and say, okay, I'll play the changeling, and you know, you can have adventures where it's the kids just having to hunt down mom or dad <laughs> while they're a changeling and hidden somewhere around the quest area. Yeah, makes a note for adventure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. You're going you're gonna to start writing for Tales of Equestria now, Justin. <sighs> no, this is the thing. I probably could start writing games anyway. <laughs> okay, next up, you did uh, another expansion, yeah? Yeah, this is another adventure. Uh, this is a, uh, is a book that's self-standing, so a, you can purchase the book separately. Mm -hmm. And that's the basically the conclusion of the, the trilogy that starts in the rule book, continues with the Curse of the Statuette, and mm -hmm. then it gets into the Festival of Light. Mm -hmm. Festival of Light, my brief for the adventure was very much a, I want a, a dungeon crawl. Mm -hmm. yeah, for me, role play is about dungeon crawls. It's mm -hmm. the thing I enjoy, I enjoy the most. So that's very you know underground in Underfall, uh, where you explore the, the underground world and mm -hmm. uh, you meet you know underground creatures. I, I I do think it's a it's a nice touch to actually have it that the stories have followed each other. So it's very sequential for for a younger kid to be able to follow and know. Okay, so we finished the first adventure. We're coming back. I now know where I was, where I am now, who I am now. Mm -hmm. My character's a little more formed in my mind, and let's 
let's move on and progress from it. So it's a very nice way to build people into it. And uh, by this level, by this stage, you probably be our level three or four, something like that, which is which is cool because you see your your pony starts to develop into mm. your know, proper main character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, then the last one, which I know has you excited, John. Yes. So I'll, I'll I'll let you talk about this one. So what is this? Well, this is the book for or the the source book for the Tales of Equestria movie, mm -hmm. and it was. The, the movie itself was amazing. <laughs> I've watched it a couple of times now and I actually just find it so so compelling because it was it was a shift in animation quality. Mm. It was a, a big step up in music because mm -hmm. the music was phenomenal. Mm. You have shown me one or two YouTube videos of the actual songs from yeah. it and the songs from My Little Pony are always very beautifully done. Mm. Yeah, yes. Te and Tempest. Um, Tempest Shadow is my favorite character. <laughs> Best, one of the finest villains apart from Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should see you see the Discord page in the Bestiary. I mean, oh, I want that, to see the it. Discord page in the Wait, Bestiary. You, you can is, actually have Discord in your adventures. That's well, he's, he's one of the characters, so yes, yeah. the villains are there too. And uh, Discord, well, villains become friends, of course, as they do. <laughs> but uh, you know, the Discord page. I, every time I, I flick through it, I always go there because he always brings up a smile on my face. It's just <laughs> hilarious. I love it. <laughs> okay, now we actually do have the book here. Now I think you had it up for pre-order. It may still be up for pre-order if you are a fan. If you want your kids to actually have a chance to play it, go and have a look at the River Horse website. I assume. Oh, it's not no longer oh, up no. for pre-order. It's up for order. Oh, it's in stock. <laughs> it's, <laughs> okay. it's here. It's real. It's here. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, like we have a physical copy here, so very quickly. I mean, like the the quality of the book is absolutely beautiful. I mean, like your printer has done a really nice job. Twenty percent shinier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's your favorite character there, John? Yes. Tem right. Tempest is amazing. And then, what does this just allow you to play with everybody who was in the movies and stuff? Or yeah, the that, races, there's add? new player races there. You can play as a cat person. You can play as a sea pony. You know, there's, there's different new options in there, mm. so the game becomes even you know even more variety, more choice. Cool. There's rules for underwater adventures. So mm. yeah, there's lots of stuff. Pirate ships, you know, airships. Mm. Uh, so I'll, I will assume that uh, people who have been fans of this role-playing game should be keeping an eye on you in 2018 for anything new coming out. Oh yes, we are, we have quite quite a line of products coming mm. out. Um, yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it's it's lovely to see that you're you're continuing to support it and actually just driving forward with it. Okay, so that is what has been happening with My Little Pony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next up is the, the Henson Collection, I believe it is? Yes, we call it the Henson Collection because actually after the amazing success of Labyrinth, mm. uh, we, well, we obviously the Henson Company, the Jim Henson Company, is really happy with us and uh, they went, ooh, is there something else? <laughs> so we're like, yeah, yeah. So after the, the, the Labyrinth and the expansion for Labyrinth, the, the Goblins expansion. Yeah, uh, which we do have here, I'll just very quickly show off the, the camera. The pretty so we have... Labyrinth itself, which is a lovely self-contained board game, to mm -hmm. actually replay the movie with all the, the wonderful quotes and stuff. It's very much that. It's, it's a game for a family. I wrote it to play with my six-year-old daughter. So yeah. we watch the movie, puppets, singing, jolliness yeah. everywhere. So have a laugh there, roll, meet creatures, make quotes from the movie, sing along. Mm -hmm. You know, it, It's exactly light-hearted fun. Light-hearted fun for the family, yeah. and it, it works. And then you expanded it with goblins. So what exactly does this add, aside from goblins? Well, it had the five, the five goblin miniatures, which mm -hmm. are you know based on Brian Froud and sculpted by Johnny Fraser Allen. So you know the, the quality is is mm -hmm. astounding. Or if I say so myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the mechanics basically, the, the, you can either just use the miniatures to replace mm -hmm. the standees which are in the main box, mm -hmm. just because obviously if we put those in the main box, it would have become a lot more expensive, as you yes, know. Yes, yes. Miniatures are the expensive component, the most expensive component. Mm -hmm. So we split it to keep the the price point lower. Uh, but the uh, there's also cards there that you can in input into the deck, and mm. basically the goblins then effectively come out of the, uh. of the of goblin city and get into the world, into the labyrinth, and, and become little obstacles that you have to overcome. So you can either just play the same game with prettier components, or uh, introduce a new mechanic. To mm. That's that's a nice touch. If you if you think your your kid who you've been playing with is ready to change it up a little bit and actually give them a bit of a new experience, it's a nice touch to have that. Mm -hmm. And then this one. There we go. Oh, a little bit darker. Ta -da! <laughs> so anyone who loved Dark Crystal as a kid, there is now a board game. Yes, that's, uh, as I said, it, it is darker than Labyrinth in terms of the tone of it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because clearly in this there's not so much um, laughter and music etc it's actually quite a grim story uh, even mm -hmm. though it's uh, still done with puppets with, with the classic Hanson style mm -hmm. but uh, the game itself is though it's a familiar mechanic because it's similar to Labyrinth in terms of the core engine mm -hmm. the actual uh, the, 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 the way you win and play the game is very different Labyrinth is cooperative mm -hmm. not stress friendly fun this one is a competitive game. Mm -hmm. So actually you have a faction, which is the Gelflings, that play one or two players, yes. that play together as a team. And on the other side you have the Skeggses, which uh, are trying to defeat the Gelflings, but also, <laughs> as in a Skeggsley kind of tone. Uh, Alessio, can I borrow your back there for a second? <laughs> just, like, just, I've got a little blade here. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So the Skeggses win. Sorry, the, the, the Gelflings win if they defeat the Skeggses. Yes. If the Skeggses defeat the Gelflings, only one of the Skeksis will win <laughs> the Emperor, the one that is currently Emperor. So mm. basically the, the Gelfings are trying to save the world, the, the Skeksis are trying to defeat them and kill the Gelfings because then they rule the world. However, they both want to be the Emperor. So mm -hmm. occasionally some of the Garthian minions or even the Skeksis themselves will mm. indeed attack the other <laughs> side and try to, which of course works to the advantage of the Gelflings. And for the Skeksis uh, you have to balance the, okay, I could attack my mm -hmm. emperor now and take his scepter and the title, or I could attack the Gelflings. Ooh, so if I have, and you work out the, mm. if I attack the emperor and become the emperor, would that mean that the Gelflings actually win the game? <laughs> so I lose. <laughs> uh, like, so should I backstab him now or a bit later when we are a bit more certain that we yeah, actually or, win? Or should I just hold the emperor up just a little bit so but, that I have a little more time? It is. And that makes it plays very differently from Labyrinth in that because also you, man, you as well as the Skeksis, you maneuver your minions around trying mm. to, the Garthins and, uh, and the Crystal Baths trying to find the Gelflings. Yeah. So it's very different in, in, in tone, like like the movie. Mm. Uh, it's okay now. Up for order? Up for pre-order? Is up for pre-order? Yeah, okay. and uh, is is the, the the ship is almost sailing, or depends on when these air has probably sailed now. So okay. it's, uh, yeah, no, so it's coming it's coming here next okay. year. So yeah, 18, it's on the ocean. 18. It's on the ocean. <laughs> yep. Right. So that's pretty much what you guys have been up to recently. I want to have a bit of a chat about the future of ah. the River Horse. Yes. No, <coughs> 2018. Yes, this turned up on your Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and people have been talking, theorizing, trying to figure out what it is. I think you are all wrong. I think this is Excalibur. I think you're doing a King Arthur game. That's correct. No, <laughs> <laughs> not quite. I'm afraid that that's not Excalibur. Mm -hmm. That is the ancestral sword of the clan. McLeod. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> As a few people have guessed, didn't they? Yes, of course. <laughs> now, yes. This, this has me excited because this is one of those, those cl classic 80s movies that everybody and their mum has watched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John, your thoughts? Oh, don't talk to me about Highlander because there can only be one, but not always. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Movies, anime series, TV series, animated series, now board game. <laughs> yep. Yes, the uh, for me, I mean, 1986 is the, the year this came out and Labyrinth came out. So <laughs> you can see where I'm going. It's yes. things that are part of who I am, are mm. part of form, form, form me into joining this, this career, you know, mm -hmm. joining the, the gaming world, joining the fantasy, sci fi world, etc. So again, Highlander, the, the music in it, the scenes, yeah. I have very deep importance in my life because I was a teenager when mm. this came out. and. Uh, you know, your early love stories and you look at him with Heather and the fantastic yes. music and that and the and the great cool sword fights, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so it, for me, this film is, you know, it has yeah, a lot of it's, importance. It's, it's one that I always revisit at least once a year. I will sit down to watch it. Yeah, it's, and then I'll watch the second one and I'll remember, oh, wait, no, don't go any further than the first. There are a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of quotes. Yeah. First? What is there? Is there a second? There's a second movie. Really? Yeah. And a third? Yeah. No, I'm, I heard, but no, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that's true. You must have dreamed. No, there can be only one Highlander movie, I think. Yeah. So uh, you actually have an image of the box for us here. So, ooh. Yes, obviously it's a prototype, uh, mm -hmm. because obviously this is going on Kickstarter uh, in, uh, in January. Yes. So uh, I'll, uh, the box may change. Obviously, depending on mm -hmm. the stretch goals, we may have a lot more immortals in there. We have, you know, great plans and uh, more immortals than you can. I'll, I'll, I'll have think a word of. and see what I can find out. <laughs> but, I mean, like, we'll get see. into that. I, uh, who all am I seeing? I'm seeing obviously Conor McLeod. I'm seeing the Kurgan. I'm seeing Ramirez. Yeah, we have Faz two more there. Yeah, Fazil and Castagir. So these are ah. basically the core offer is of course what you see in the movie. Mm. The, all the characters in the movie, and in their what we thought were the most uh, the, the most famous costumes and the way they appear. Yes. Uh, but of course. 
we can delve into their history and have models and Ooh. things of a you know of a earlier stage of in their life. Don't tempt me, Alessio, don't tempt me. We can even make up our own, but we'll, we'll see if we get there. I mean, yeah. at the basic, we get that. Another thing I've done because of Highlander, because obviously I, you know, of some ex, my ex colleagues, I know mm -hmm. that uh, one uh, Graham McNeil is a great fan of this of this movie, <laughs> and uh, of course he's Scottish, and uh, so we always have quoted each other with this. We always, I always yeah. try to put on my my, my my Scottish accent, which is obviously ridiculous with my Italian oh, accent. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> is that it? I'm shy on camera. Yeah, that's about it. I'm too shy on camera, but. Uh, yeah, so he's written the stories. You know, oh, he's written the, nice. in, in the in the rule book. There's the background story of all these characters, and he's written them for us. Which is, mm. I mean, well, he, he also had an interesting part in the in the video for the for the Kickstarter. Well, but I will I will not go there. Okay. <laughs> you have to watch it. Fantastic. And then you're you're working with Studio Canal on this. Yes, of course. And yes. how are they to work with? Just just for pure curiosity. Oh, they're, they're being very very flexible. I That's mean, the, the fact that, for example, we get to we, it was not easy negotiating this, but we actually get to use film footage in the trailer, oh, which nice. is which is astonishing. Huge. It's mm. a great victory. It's fantastic yeah. because I don't think I ever remember any Kickstarter any promotional thing remember. using the actual footage from the movie. Yeah, if, which, if you remember any, post below. But I think this may be numero uno. That could be only one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many times can we can we say that? Oh, trust me, I can do this all day. But yes, oh, no. It's a I'm very excited about that, and uh, you know these have been very good uh, yeah. licensors to work with. Well, honestly, this, this is one that I'm going to be watching like a hawk, and I'm sure there are many, many fans of Highlander out there who are going to be watching it like a hawk. So, of course, you are. <laughs> uh, the Kurgan <laughs> takes me right back to my childhood. Okay, now. Uh, you do have some other games on your lineup. Yeah, next next year is going to be a busy year. Yes, another busy year, I should say. So, which, which one would you like to mention first? Well, whichever you put on the slides first. Uh, <laughs> okay, I will. I will bring this one up first. So we're very quickly going to mention Aha. Hunger Games is coming yes. next year. Yes, yes, yes. We announced it. It took a long time to count to fruition, but yes, we have confidence it's coming out next year. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So, the Hunger Games, Mockingjay, Big War for Panem. It's like a big strategy game with tons of toy soldiers in there. Okay, that's taking it in a completely different direction from mm. what I thought it would go. I that's thought right. you might yeah. actually play an actual, you know, playing as the Hunger Games happening. But if you're playing the, the wider game... Uh, that was interesting. Uh, when we talked about the game, one decision early on in collaboration with, uh, with obviously the, mm. the author and, and uh, the, uh, the IP holder and the studios, mm. is that it was felt overall that the Hunger Games, the point of that is how horrible mm. and nasty it is to have kids fighting each other and killing, murdering each other mm. for, for entertainment, for laugh. Yeah. We didn't want to make more of a game about that. Mm. Uh, something, uh, oh, let's, no, let's, that, let's have kids murdering each other for laugh. So actually, it was no, a moral choice that. there. I agree with that. And instead, we, we decided to go on a more uh, satellite view of the struggle for Pan Am. Mm. So it became like a big strategy game, you know, like mm. in the style of Axis and Allies, yeah. uh, Fortress mm. America, those, with lots of toy soldiers, plastic mm. toy soldiers that. And you basically have the struggle of the resistance against the capital, in uh, both in terms of the the actual troops, but also the heroes play a huge part, which a lot, of course allows us to make nice twenty five mil, thirty two mil models mm. of all the heroes, or as many as the heroes that we can get into the quick start. Mm. We'll see, mm. but uh, okay, at this, least... this is one again. I want to have a, a close look at and dive into if I can. <laughs> the last one, this is the big one for me. <laughs> now, Highlander, that's huge. Mm -hmm. This, however, if you want to have a quick look, John. Big is the right word. <laughs> Big stompy <laughs> robot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you guys have picked up the license to make a Pacific Rim game. That's correct. That is Gypsy Avenger from Pacific <laughs> Rim Uprising. Indeed. <laughs> so it's a new, new, new boner Mark VI, Mark VI mm. Jaeger. Uh, this is uh, is he's firing a gravity sling, which is something that pulls big chunks of uh, terrain and then flings them around. <laughs> so anybody who knows me knows I love. Basically, I love Pacific Rim. I love the the big monsters versus giant robots fights. Yeah. So my my inner fanboy right now is just going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, giant robots punching giant monsters. You know, the mm. old the old Japanese uh, creatures movies. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, and I mean, whenever I see Pacific Rim, I think oh, they made a, an Evangelion movie. It's not better. <laughs> it's my oh my god. Uh, the music in that thing is oh, you know, the, 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 it's so good. I, I was so lucky that I saw it in an IMAX cinema. Mm. It was just the, the sound, uh, the slowness of these things stomping around, mm, yeah. the, the mass. They really convey that feeling of, you know, huge, yeah. big things there. So. Uh, but it's, it's the music as well helps to convey that weight whenever it's that 
that slow guitar riff as Gypsy Danger starts to walk to get forward with the, the, the ship yeah. out behind it. It just really <laughs> sets the tone of it. So yes. cool. Mm. Which was your favourite, John? Oh, no. I'm going to um, do it to you. I'm putting you on point. Uh, my favourite, Jaeger? Yeah. Um, from movie one. From movie one. From movie one, yes. Um, the, I'll bet it's Cherno Alpha. That's that was the name I was trying to think the of. Tank. It was uh, Cherno <laughs> Alpha. It's just, Russian tank. Because mm. they're they're cool. They called it a T ninety. It's a T ninety. That's that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> it looked mean. It just didn't get long enough in the movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I loved the look of Striker Eureka. It was just so light, fast, and agile looking. Yeah. Well, Mark fives are indeed. You can see the all the Mark sixes in in Uprising, which are the next generation, or mm. are more similar if you want to Striker Eureka. Yeah. Yeah. They are, as you say, faster, more yeah. agile, more you know the. the uh, kind of a thinner silhouette, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can show some things like I don't know. We want to grab a few of the. You want? Can you're, we? You're okay. Can we? Can I, we? Yeah, I thought we yeah, were just yeah. putting these here. Uh, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so which 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 do you well, want? Let's start with the the grey one for uh, for a start. This? Okay, so yeah. this is an early prototype. Very early. I'm keeping prototype. it very well hidden by my hand. Mm-hmm. And is. Would you like to see? I think <laughs> we would. We have a gypsy. Danger. Danger. So this is for oh. Pacific Ring One because we can do both. We'll start with the second. We we'll start with the pricing, but then we'll go into into Pacific Ring One again, all well, depending on how <laughs> successful this thing is. But uh, so you ho you're holding gorgeous. something that is what 75, 80 millimeters tall. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a quite a big model. Yeah. Uh, the details are lovely. Yes. The obviously being able to use the the actual CG uh, from from the movie means that you effectively have. The actual thing you're yeah. actually printing literally the thing you see on the movie, and then of course you have to adapt it. It's a huge work. I mean, mm. it would seem easy to you know you clearly print the the the, 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 the CG. Yeah, there's so many like, small details in there that might they, get lost. Also, yeah. they're not designed for 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 three D printing. It's something we learned. They are actually all empty. They're ah. you don't you can't print them. You have to fill them up mm. <laughs> from the inside, which is a huge you know very mm. very you know, and Gigiterti again has has got into it and uh, <laughs> yes. So we're doing that, and then. Mm -hmm. If you want uh, to show the Gypsy thing. Gypsy Avenger version, yep. So that's the prototype, and then this is close to what we are looking at selling. Gypsy Danger Mark Six. That is a Mark Six indeed, with guarantee playing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Ready to kick ass. Okay, <laughs> an important question: Is it pre-painted like this? Please tell me it's pre-painted like this. They are pre-painted like that. That's oh. what we are trying to bring up, and obviously we are now adjusting the the, the levels of painting. Is all mm -hmm. part of the sourcing the the right the right material and the right painting. Yes. The, the if, best, if you if you mind, I interject. No, no, no. The, the, the best thing is you're you're appealing to both the collector because there's been a lot of people trying to get collectors sort of statues and stuff after the the first movie came out, and there there became a bit of momentum for that, and you're appealing to the collector as well as the gamer in this case. So you're gonna have. If your pre-paints really look the part, you're going to get a lot of interest through that. Yeah, and we are going for it, like you said, for the for the second one, the new one, but also the first one. So yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do both. If it comes anywhere near this level of painting, I will be overjoyed. <laughs> Simple as that. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, now I'm sure we're probably going to want to hang fire on delving into details on exactly how the game plays and. I Looking can only that. assume that they may have to have something to fight against. Yes, <coughs> yes, there's um, even bigger, <laughs> chunky things that they have to fight against, mm. indeed. But I, I love the fact that you've got this. And so you're doing a miniatures game. Anything else on top? There are rumors that uh, the, that will be followed up by a role play game as well. <laughs> that, that could that could be interesting. How yeah. how is that going to work? Yeah. Well, for start, uh, in, well, in the game, in the main game, a player will be able to control a number of Jaegers, a number of Kaiju, so a number of models, mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four, five, depending on probably if you're a beginner or a veteran. Mm. Uh, but in the role-play game, we're going the other way around. We're actually going at least two people have to mind meld and drift together and uh, to pilot a single Jaeger, of course. It will be all about Rangers, effectively, yeah, pilots. Uh, I'm going to say this now. I, I have always <laughs> wanted to explore deeper into this world, but uh, John? I, I, I do not. I don't think we're drift compatible. I'm sorry. It's me. It's not you. If comment below who you think is drift compatible with Justin in the office. I'm pretty sure I know who the answer will be. Oh no 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 no! I know where. But this I'm going. not going to suggest it here because I know our lovely community out there will uh, understand they, they, they where they know. we're going. They they know what would happen. <laughs> of course, it would probably be me inside a Jaeger just in a street jacket. Like, would, no 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 no. If if if. I was drift compatible with anyone in the office, would be Lloyd. Uh, yeah. 
We're uh, both we both laugh at the same things, and that's about it. Yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> He's smarter than me, though. Trying to figure it out, I would say Colin and Lance would definitely be drift compatible. No, really? No, Colin and Az. Really? Yeah, totally. Okay, okay. <laughs> or maybe the three of them can come together and do one mm. of the big ones, you know. Maybe. Maybe. Well, maybe. I think I would like to mind meld with Warren, actually. Warren and I piloting. <laughs> yeah, it will be entertaining, I think. I'm sorry, but the, the, the soundtrack, I don't know, it might go a little bit Benny Hill. <laughs> well, like, that's, that's very exciting for yep. me, is looking into huge movie IPs now, you know, classics and future releases. Mm. Alessio, fantastic work, may it long continue. Thank you. We have, a, we have a few more bits, not at this scale, of course, but you know, we're yep. still having other little... Yeah, well, you have uh, at least one more image Project. from here, so what are we looking at here? This is uh, a piece of classic fantasy artwork. What is indeed. this? That's Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer, indeed. Yes. So, yes, that's another license we are working with, mm -hmm. and uh, the, there will be a series of products, actually, with this. Uh, we are The first one to come out, and is coming out right now, -ish, mm. is the... We're making puzzles, jigsaw puzzles. Ah. So we, we wanted to you know, expand a bit the, the, the areas where we sell stuff. Mm. And the jigsaw puzzle is something that a, a friend, quite a few friends of mine are really keen on, uh, mm. including my wife. <laughs> and, um, and so the, the, we, we, we acquire some amazing, the writers of amazing art, like mm. Frenfrazetta's. And uh, so there's the, there's the Death Dealer and the Barbarian uh, will be the two Ooh. ones we start with. But we think, you know, if they go well, then Queen mm. of Egypt or quite a lot of other pieces mm. of art. So we use them for this, but mm. also we are designing a small card game. Ah. Like a card game which obviously shows off, you made tarot sized cards that yeah. actually have the old, well, a lot of illustration from Frazetta. Yeah, and exactly so it, it's all about the showing off the art effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, th this is one of the things classical pieces of fantasy artwork like this are just timeless. Doesn't matter what generation you're a part of, they just look beautiful, whoever you are, whenever you were born. Right, so other than that, what else do we have here? Do -do 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 -do. Uh, I'm just double checking my list because <laughs> Alessio did list a ton of stuff that he's working on here. Uh, you've repackaged Loka. Yeah, Loka the, the card game as well. We, we called it Loka the card game instead mm -hmm. of Tower. As I said, we're going a bit more into the card game mm -hmm. markets as well. So that, that's uh, something like a nice thing to start because that artwork is amazing and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Ralph Horst lays art. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, we'll start with that and then the, the Death Dealer, other card games. So yeah, mm -hmm. a few card games coming up. So. Okay, so the final thing I want to know, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to want to know because they're, after this, they're going to want to be pestering you for information. <laughs> what shows are River Horse turning up to in 2018? You know, confirmed and maybe thinking about, I would say, is okay to talk about. Well, we'll definitely be a UK game expo. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, that's our main thing because basically UK based for us is very is very easy to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, logistically, is, is simpler. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ponycon, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be a Ponycon. You, you have a, a pony game. Why not? Yes, we we did really well at Ponycon this okay. year. It was great. And uh, we're obviously looking at Gen Con mm -hmm. and uh, the Essen. Toy Fairs as well, oh, because I mean, with all these titles, there's probably enough uh, mm -hmm. momentum now for us to look at having the stand there. Uh, it, yeah. it either would be us or would be there with somebody else, but still, mm -hmm. still negotiating things at the moment. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, if you want to, you know, find Mr. Cavatori at an event uh, in 2018, to actually, you know, just go, Alessio, what's happening with this? What's happening with this? What's happening with this? Uh, those are four that you could possibly find him at. Uh, other than that, stay tuned because. I am going to get you sat down, Alessio. The games you've been talking about, if we can manage it, I want to get gameplay, I want to get deeper chats. Uh, basically, I just want to go explore all of this. Because <laughs> my inner nerd is just like, you know, frothing at the mouth, going, did you, did you play? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I think we can do that, yes. <laughs> uh, final thoughts from yourself, John? I still want to play this. <laughs> <laughs> is that copy going home with you? Yes. Is it disappearing? Yes. <laughs> I've just said that officially on. Uh, never. <laughs> this, this book, this book is staying in the office where it should be, like all the other books in the office do. <laughs> Naturally. It is not going home to my other half's. Yeah, yeah. Cupboard where the rest of her tales of Equestria stuff <laughs> yeah, is sitting. Yeah. Uh, Alessio, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, mate. It's always good Thank to be you here. for coming to visit. Go on. Uh, it's really exciting to hear what you're up to. Long life to River Horse. Everybody, get your comments in below. There is a lot to talk about there. We will move on and we will see you soon. Hi, guys. I'm Mel the Train Tutor, and you're watching The Weekender on BeastsOfWar.com. So there can be only one. <laughs> I am looking forward to this game. Yes. What? Go on, tell me about it then. What, is, what, is he, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to it because it's really encapsulated in the movie. This yeah. is a movie that I grew up as a kid with. It was one of those videos that you weren't really meant to watch whenever I was little. Mm -hmm. Same for you? Yeah. 
watched it anyway, loved it, and now from what I'm seeing of the game, it's going to just be absolutely fantastic. You're going to get to play out the the immortals going through time, through history, coming to the gathering, yeah. and then having mm -hmm. a final clash. I, it's doing the same for me, because the, the Highlander was a huge mm -hmm. movie for mm -hmm. me as a teenager. <laughs> like I remember in our young teens... Um, uh, watching the Highlander and it just like being the most amazing thing. Yeah. You know, how could such a movie exist? Because when it started, we were watching it and we were thinking, this is going to be a bit boring. You yeah. know, this is just about history. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 no! And then it and then it became yeah but amazing. It's, it's the fact that Alessio is hinting that they're going to be able to tweak with the backstory line and stuff of Immortals. Ooh. You know, that's that's got me sitting there going. Oh. Yeah. And he actually right. did mention to me that uh, Graham McNeil of Black Library fame is going to be doing the writing. Oh, yeah, very cool. That yeah. will be cool. Yeah. That will be cool. And it was nice to hear everything else that River Horse has been up to as well. It's nice to yeah. catch up with those guys once in a while. I think we've more news in the pipeline for them as well, haven't we? Of we? we do. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We Alessio, do. <laughs> in the hood. I, I have a tip for all you Alessio Cavatori fans out there. If Alessio Cavatori ever stands and goes. Um, I, I'm working on something quite secret. I can't tell you about it. All you have to do, <laughs> all you have to do, is go. That's okay. I don't really care. What? You don't care? <laughs> you don't care that I'm working on this and this and this. And this? <laughs> no, no. River Horse is really establishing itself. Yes, it absolutely it's got is. Some very, very nice IPs under its belt, and yeah. some very exciting ones coming up. It's worth saying not to forget. We're hoping that River Horse are hoping that it's going to be the twelfth of January that mm. they're going to be starting that Kickstarter. Yes. So it's yeah. not far away, yeah. and we will have plenty of coverage of Highlander as well. Fantastic! Yeah. Right, um, competition. Mm -hmm. Right, what are we giving away? We are giving away. <laughs> Making me grab stuff. Hold on, Half the glory. <laughs> <laughs> Half the glory. Two-player starter set for Dark Age. So you've got the Dragiri and the Forsaken in here, and everything you need to play. Now, we're going to lighten the, lighten the mood a little bit here, okay? So, this weekender, we have such a task for you. <laughs> to be in with a chance of winning this fine two-player starter set, we want you to put your absolute best worst Christmas cracker joke into the comments so that over the course of this Christmas, we can be creasing ourselves or going, oh, God. It's got to be a groan. It's the best worst. <laughs> if, if someone genuinely laughs at it, it's not what we're looking for. Oh, right? no, I'm not so, looking for it. I, I, I want, oh. oh. Bonus points if they take a picture of the actual Christmas cracker, they got it out. No, but make it up. Do whatever. Just, Just go get, wild. Get your <laughs> best, you get your best Christmas cracker jokes. They don't even have to be Christmas related, man. Just get them Get them in there. I want, I want to see a thread of funnies. Mm. I want a thread of funny. Why was the snowman looking through the carrots? And then we will be picking a oh, random. Oh, why was the snowman looking through the carrots? He was picking his nose. <laughs> uh, didn't. <laughs> so, Can I uh, win? Can I get the star set? <laughs> he will be in there. I will. He will I want you. <laughs> joke for joke, he will be in there because he has been torturing us with this. So uh, get them in there. We'll be we'll be reading them. We'll be picking a winner at random. If when we've picked you, you have put a Christmas cracker joke in, mm -hmm. then you will win that. If you haven't, then we will move on to the next one who will who has done a Christmas cracker joke, and then they will win it. And we're doing it randomised as always, yeah? It's all randomised okay. as always. Um, all that's left to be said is thank you to Ben, Justin, as... And we've got a couple of prizes we have to give away. Oh, yeah. if we're not giving away the prizes away yet. No, 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 we've got two here to give away. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Christmas gifts. Okay. Christmas Christmas gifts. Is at the ready? Okay, as what are we giving away? So first of all, we have the Jezerai Terrain bundle set, the mm -hmm. mega 400 pound crazy ah! bundle. Ah! The, uh, okay. <laughs> the, yeah, the Necromunda Dream Kit. The, the, yep. we, 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 we put a lovely video on Facebook with Justin playing with the guys from Foreground, and it mm -hmm. looks amazing on a table with mm -hmm. uh, Forest Terrain as well on a 6x4. Yeah. It fills it out really nicely. Yeah. Want to tell yeah. us who won? Uh, our winner is Mojack. From Beast of War. So we yes. we did. We asked you to comment what expansion you would like to see for the set mm -hmm. and what you would call it. Yes. So what did he say? But winners uh, picked at random. We, yes. 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 Yeah, we, okay. you were only the, entered nice if you did that. Mm -hmm. That actually fits really well with. Yeah. So <clears throat> I would love to see some damaged, abandoned industrial terrain pieces that would fit into more Necromunda setting, eaten by rust and dripping with toxic sludge. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're making my, you're making my Christmas joy fall off. Oh, all your glitter's all over my finger, man. Uh, and he would name it Hub Prime for the reference to Necromunda's Hive Primaris. Okay. Or Primus. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, Mojack. Fantastic. Well done, well done yeah. Mojack. Uh, fill in the claim a prize form, and uh, Justin will sort you out with his glittery <laughs> beard. We also had to give away yep. a Battle Foam Privateer Press backpack. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, it was a wicked good one. Yeah. And this was, you had to enter this one, you had to let Warren stalk you in 2018. <laughs> and I will. I will. No, no, really. I will. He will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you had to tell us what events in 2018 that you would like to take the backpack to. And the winner was... Big Bad Baz! <laughs> Talk to yourself then, Warren. Big Bad Baz says he's going to BonesCon 2018 in Birmingham. And he would, he would take three Kador Horde armies, Doom Reavers, Iron Fangs and Winter Guard. And that Good bag shit. is big enough to fit it all. It really is. <laughs> right. Now we're done. Yep. Hit the button. Claim right. your prize. Don't yeah. forget. Be warned, it'll probably be the new year before it comes out to you. <laughs> Make excuses now, man. I like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful Christmas and a wonderful new year. For any of you backstagers, we'll be joining you tomorrow morning on Christmas Eve mm -hmm. to have a little bit of a chillax with you all and chew the fat and get ready for, get ready for our holidays. Right, dudes. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. It was the night before Christmas, when all through the hobby hall, not a beastie was stirring, not even a gall. The dice bags were hung by the TV with care, in hopes that Warzan soon would be there. The paint pots were nestled all snug in their rack, while Nids had the space marines watching their back. And Dignity in his kerchief, and Brennan in his cap, had just settled down for a weekender chat. When out in the hall there arose such a row, Dignity sprang from his chair to see what Lancorse had done now. Into the hall he flew like a flash to see John Lyon's painting, a bit slapdash. The newly sprayed primer looked like new fallen snow gave zenithal shading to objects below. When what to his wandering eyes did appear but a miniature army of Napoleonic flamers. Merry Christmas.